much he means to you, how wonderful he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We lift our hands as a sign of surrender. We lift our hands as a sign that we're no threat. Hallelujah. We lift our, son, our hands as a sign. Lord, have your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. In our lives, oh God, in our mind, in our hearts, in our soul. Lord, have your way on this day. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just forget about everything that happened before you got in here. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Of all that you went through this week, the Lord allowed you to remain in the land of the living. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Bible says in his presence there's fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures evermore. Just bask in the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let him minister to that place. Mm -hmm. You know that place. That place where there's pain. That place where there's hurt. That place where there's disappointment. That place where there's uncertainty. Let the Lord minister to you right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Uh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord responds to your praise. Uh, yes, God. Yes, God. In spite of all that you're going through and in spite of all that you're putting up with, in spite of all of the hurts and the disappointments, hallelujah, the Lord responds to your praise. Because your praise says, Lord, you have not moved, even though some things have shifted in my life. Lord, you're still on the throne, even though some people have left my life. Lord, you're still in control, even when it seems like everything else is out of control. So we worship the Lord. The Bible says in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go before the throne of grace right now. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we come before your presence now. Oh, God, we come declaring your righteousness and your holiness in this earth. We come to say thank you this morning. Thank you for how good you've been. Lord, thank you for how good you are. Lord, we praise and magnify you. You brought us through another week, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for how you kept us. We thank you for how you covered us. We thank you for how you protected us. In the name of Jesus, God, we come with a praise on our lips and we come with joy in our heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory right now, God.
Lord. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, it says where the presence of the Lord is, there's fullness of joy. Yes. At his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. You can't get any better pleasure than being in the presence of the Lord. When the Lord comes down to see about you, what a joy it is for God to do what he does. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you this morning. Will you prepare your offering this morning? And I ask again if you will give that $25 per week. Amen. To help in the ministry. Amen. Make sure that God gets your tithe and not a tip. Amen. There's a difference in tip and tithe. Amen. We'll give the, the server at the restaurant 20%. Won't even give God 10%. But how many know you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try? And as you're preparing your offering this morning, I want you to get in mind that thing which you have before the Lord. Amen. We are giving because it is our duty in the kingdom. Amen. The Bible says that the Lord gives seed to the sower. He gives you something to give. And it's in our giving that the Lord blesses. You know the Bible said it, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. And our giving methods are there on the screen. By cash out, it's dollar sign Providence Kojic or Providence Kojic HP at gmail.com. Also by PayPal, the acronym or the address is paypal.me slash Providence Kojic. Amen. And you may also send it in the old fashioned way by snail mail, P.O. Box 1483, High Point, North Carolina, 27. Two six one, Amen. And I let me say to everyone who gives, I'm not able to respond to each and every one. Uh, the Lord has really blessed us with some people that have never set foot on the ground, but will send an offering to bless the ministry. And they can testify that their lives are blessed, not because of providence, but because of their giving to God. Amen. And so thank you for what you have given. Thank you for how you have given the spirit with which you've given. Amen. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And because your spirit in giving is right, the Bible says that God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And so we praise God for the spirit of giving and the ministry of giving. Amen. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you for this time of giving. Lord, I pray that this seed that is sown on today will return to the lives of those who have sown it. Lord, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. God, the seed that we sow never leaves our life but goes into our future and awaits our arrival. Lord, thank you for the grace that abounds towards us. Thank you for the favor that is on our lives. Thank you for how you've given us to be givers. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, God, for all that you have poured into our lives. Lord, you said you'd open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive. We thank you, God, today that we are blessed to be a blessing. We honor you, we praise you, and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. As we transition into our praise and worship, will you do me one small favor? Amen. Our dear sister, Hetty Townsend, is back in the sanctuary. We missed her. Can we give God praise for her being here today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I don't want you to be absent from church so you can get the same uh, blessing. Amen. <laughs> but we're grateful. And we're praying for those whom we don't see. You know, this is a very difficult time. Amen. We're, we're in the endemic, I believe they say it is. Amen. But I just went to a funeral Thursday. Uh, from someone who passed away of COVID. So we're not out of the woods. Amen. We still have to be careful and cautious. Amen. Amen. In the midst of all that is going on. Let us receive Sister Jerry Pryor with our praise and our worship. Join in 
Lift your voice, clap your hands. Amen. Sing yourself happy today. Right along the river. God bless you. Amen.
of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah, uh, yes, Lord. I love you, Lord. Uh, I love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my strength. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are all teach it like he, he wrote it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're grateful, grateful to God for you all being with us today. Immediately to the word of God. I hope not to be before you long. I have a teaching spirit today. All right. Amen. Not a preachy spirit. I don't, I don't like to be loud. Amen. But I, I'd like for you to hear what thus saith the Lord. Yes. Amen. And I simply have one question for you today. Amen. If you will prepare to look at Psalm 138 in our hearing today, I simply have one simple question that I want you to ask yourself. And that question is, do you have the look? Uh-huh. Do you have the look? Will you say that with me? Do you, do you have, have the look? look? Amen. I want to let you know today that our posture before the Lord is of utmost importance. Yes. How we approach him, how we are before him, how we act in his presence, how we, uh, 
how we place ourselves is important to how he responds to us. Just hang in there with me. I'm going to get there very quickly this morning. But your attitude is very, very important before the Lord. Well, Can't come to him with a stinking attitude and expect heaven's best to fall into your lap. Mm -hmm. Many of us have tried to force the hand of God and God is saying, I'm not forced by anybody. Yes. Well, yes. Amen. I, I, I bless whom I bless. Yes. I, I yes. curse whom I curse. Uh, he even talked about Saul and uh, even uh, uh, about um, uh, other ones in the Old Testament, how that he hardened their heart yes. Yes. for his own purpose. Yes. And God is uh, begging us today and through this word to... Uh, let me say it like mama would say it. Fix your face. Uh -huh. Let me just cut to the chase. Fix your face. Mm -hmm. Fix your face before God. Yes. Because if you don't come to him with the right look, yes. then you'll have a worse look when he gets done. Uh -huh. Amen. Right. So having the right attitude yes. is important to getting the best out of God. Yes. How we present ourselves is necessary to understand how he views us. Now he knows everything about us. He knows how he made us. He knows how he designed us. He knows how he destined our lives. But uh, at the same time, he gives us the choice of how we step to him. Amen. Of late, I've noticed that there has been a shift globally in people's behavior towards the things of God. The society has done a shift that is uh, rather repugnant. Can I say it that way? Uh, this world the thinking coming out of a pandemic and uh, the Lord blessing the land and uh, not wiping out the entire population people would be a little more considerate. Uh, people would be a little more caring. But instead of coming out better, people have come out bitter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People have come out with an attitude that I deserve better. I deserve the best of the best. I've been oppressed for two years, and I deserve more than I have. And I want to tell you today that God is not pleased. Amen. God is not pleased with our stinking attitude. Mm. You think that people would run to the house of the Lord. <laughs> but it's so easy now to run from the house Amen. of the Lord. Yes. And I want to talk to you that are watching me by social media. We're so glad that you're in the service this morning. We would be more gladder, and that's a Mississippi term, uh, teachers, <laughs> amen. We would be more gladder to see your face in the place. Nevertheless, amen. we welcome you into worship yes. this morning. If you just put a thumbs up or a heart or a, a caring uh, emoji in the comments, we would appreciate you letting us know that you're here now that that's over. Amen. <laughs> Do you have the look? that will get the best out of your relationship with God. In these uh, last days, in these last two years, we've seen, and it's not just been the last two years, but it's been the last 20, 30, 40, 100,000 years that values and norms and morality and ideologies have all shifted to accommodate the microcosm demands rather than the universal governance. It's a few complaining folks that are driving society. Mm -hmm. Not a few righteous folks, but a few folks who feel like they ought to have their way. Mm -hmm. Now I want to let you know that God is still in control, so they're yes, not yes. Uh, just running roughshod over. Uh, they, 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 God's got everything right where he wants it. And uh, do you not know that God will use you to accomplish his will and still send you to hell? Yes. 
Uh, Lord have mercy. Just ask Judas. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Bible says none is lost save the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. I'm praying that God will use me to further the kingdom of God, but that I not be lost. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my. To be brutally honest with you, our progressive conservative agenda is in one word, vexing. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw some things in the past couple of weeks that I wish I could unsee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More than the individual elder, I saw the spirit that was about them. And it's the spirit that vexes. Yes. It's the spirit that vexes my spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't blame you for wanting to be what you want to be, but yes. you're going to have to face God, and I wish that you would just get really saved. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. On any given day, in any given place, we're liable to see almost anything. Yes. That's right. That's Can I get a witness today? Yes. This world is becoming more and more strange by the minute. And it's because we will not say no to evil. Oh, Jesus. Pray with me, saints. And can, can I be transparent for just a second? Uh, uh, as a born-again believer still in human flesh, I'm even bothered by my thoughts and my actions from time to time. And it goes a little something like this is, how in the world could I think such a thing? But don't you think for a moment that I'm the only one? Uh-huh. You don't, don't raise your hand, don't jump for joy, don't shout amen, but I ain't the only one that's got some strange stuff that comes my way. Oh, Lord, the enemy will try any and everything to get us off track with God. Can you imagine what would be revealed if each of us had a scrolling LED across our forehead? Oh, Lord, oh, my. Let me turn my discernment down because, Lord, some of y'all are already at the restaurant. Some of y'all are already somewhere else besides in here with me. That's all right. The, the, the Lord's not going to expose you this morning, but somebody just say, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, God, hallelujah. Don't you think I'm unbiblical? The Bible says they praise me with their lips, yes. but their hearts are far from me. Uh-huh. Lord, have mercy. What, have, what has the devil put in your mind just as you've been in the presence of the Lord? And I know some of y'all saying, what is that he got on? Who, what, who, told, who dressed him this morning? I know, that's okay. We're going to get through it, though. Aren't you glad that only the Lord knows our thoughts are far off? I'm so glad that the Lord doesn't just put me on blast. Lord Jesus, I'm so glad that the Lord is caring about me. He loves me. With an everlasting I'm so glad that the Lord has compassion for me. I'm so glad that the Lord cares and is concerned and works with me and works through me and works through me. I'm so glad. Oh, God, hallelujah. But we've got to contend with what's going on in this world. We've got to contend with the stuff that the devil brings to us yes, and the stuff yes. that we bring to ourselves. Yes. Can I say it like uh, the Apostle Paul did in Romans 7 and 21? When I would do good, would evil do good. is present with me. Yes, it's not that I'm just thinking bad thoughts all the time, but when I go to do good, evil presents itself. Yes. Okay, it's silent night this morning, but that's, it's going to be all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thank, you ought to thank God that he doesn't present you with some stuff. You ought to thank God that, his, uh, that the enemy's mission is not accomplished in you. Oh, bless his name. We're not so good that we can't be tempted. I'm not the only one with a Mountain Dew and chocolate enemy. Come on, somebody. Amen. What's your kryptonite this morning? Is it the numbers? Uh-huh. Is it the lottery? Uh -huh. Is it the horoscope? Uh -huh. Oh, my, 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 my. Uh, maybe you too safe for that. Is it Moscato? Uh-huh. Some of y'all's mouth watering right now. Oh, have mercy. Jesus. Uh-huh. 
Maybe that's not your thing. Is it shoes that's your kryptonite? You just can't resist buying another pair of shoes. Ain't got room for them in your closet, but you got to have another pair. Amen, amen, amen. Is it Mad Dog 2020? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Is it Boone's Farm? Uh, what's the word, Thunderbird? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, I ain't hit yours yet, but just, just keep on listening. Uh-huh, maybe your kryptonite is hatred. Maybe it's superstition. Uh, maybe it's Idris Elba. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, maybe it's Halle. Uh, but whatever your kryptonite is, all of us got a kryptonite that the enemy keeps bringing back around at the most inconvenient time. And I know some of y'all are super saved, and you, you, you don't fall for the, the pickup lines anymore. Uh, you know the ones, girl, you fine as wine. And it just makes you weak in the knees. Uh, you, you know, and brothers, don't you, don't, do, don't you think you exempt? Amen. Uh, women walk up to you, sir, are you married? Uh, yes, I am. Are you happy? Don't ask me that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't ask me that. Amen, hallelujah, glory to God. But when I would do good, evil is present. I said I was going to teach and not preach today, so let me just teach a little bit. But this shifty world behavior has attempted from the beginning of time to creep into the church. Uh -huh. The Barner Group has assessed how the shift has had its impact on worship. No longer is there a compulsion to do the right thing because it's the right thing, Amen. but now it's what's in it for me. And I have tried my best not to, uh, not to accommodate people's idiosyncrasies. Tried my best not to give you what you want, but rather give you what you need. Yes. Someone said, when the pulpit becomes a reflection of the pew, the church loses its identity. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the only pastor that's struggling to get people connected and stay connected to God. Barna Research Group said two and five pastors want to quit. Mm -hmm. Can I just be transparent with you? Yes, uh, okay, I ain't gonna be, no, not this morning. Uh -huh. Amen, y'all might not come back. But, but can you just say sometimes? Sometimes. 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 Okay, let me, give, give me a moment, I gotta recover. Two and five want to just quit. Mm -hmm. But I have to realize, Elder, that it wasn't the people that hired me, and it's not the people that can hire me. I'm on payroll for God. Doesn't make it any easier, evangelist, but I'm on the payroll of God. Oh, yeah. right. He called me. He chose me. He commissioned me. He sent me. And there's a grace that comes where the Lord commissions you, where the Lord sends you. So if God has given you two children, he's given you a grace for two children. He's given you seven children. He's given you a grace for seven children. If he's given you whatever he's given you, he's given you a grace just for that. To combat this apathetic mindset of, I don't have to go to church to be saved, we must take an honest assessment of our motives, our drive, and the source of the why Amen. of what we do. Yes. You got to do an honest assessment of why it's difficult to come to the house of the Lord. Got to do an assessment of why it's difficult to love lovable and unlovable people. Got to do an assessment of why we do what we do because your motive matters more than what you do. Amen. You can give a thousand dollars with a stinking attitude and receive less of a blessing than someone who gives a dollar. Amen. 
with the right attitude. Amen. What you do and why you do it are paramount to what is going on in your life. Because it produces a fruit, either a rotten fruit or a good fruit. Yes. Amen. It's not just about church attendance, but it is really about feeding your soul. Yes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 6, though our outward man perish, the inward man is renewed yes. day oh, by yes. day. Oh, yes. How are we feeding the inner man? And number two, what are we feeding the inner man? Yes. Well, King David uh, gives us insight into preparation, positioning, posturing, and presentation in Psalm 138. Mm -hmm. Do you have the look? Mm -hmm. Having gone through what I've gone through just since the start of 2022, I now know why the Lord said for us to strengthen the inner man. Can you testify that you've been hit from the outside by some stuff that has rocked your world? You've been hit outside by some stuff that has you wondering what's really going on, but the Lord has been the anchor of your soul. The Lord has kept you in place. The Lord has kept you from going under. The Lord has kept you from going down. The Lord has kept you from losing your mind. The Lord has kept you. Can somebody say thank you? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Inward renewal is necessary for survival in a world that's headed to hell in a handbasket. Somebody say, Lord, strengthen me from the inside out. And so I ask you again, do you have the look? Do you have the look of determination? Do you have the look of purpose? Yes. Do you have the look yes. of confidence? Do you have the look of tenacity? Yes. Do you have the look of courage? Yes. Do you have the look of boldness? Do you have the look that says I'll go if I have to go all by myself? Yes. Do you have the look that says I'm going all the way with God? Yes. May not go with you, but I'm going all the way with God. May not make it the same time you make it, but I'm going all the way. With the Lord God Almighty. Can somebody give God some praise right there? Hallelujah. For determination to go all the way. And so, that Psalm 138, as I close, there are four features that Psalm 138 highlights to us today. And that is look back, look forward, look around, and look up. Say that with me look back. Look forward, look forward, look around, look around and look up. look up. When he talks about in those first three verses, look back, he's saying, look where the Lord has brought him from. Look what the Lord has brought him through. David writes this as he is sitting on the throne and he is king in the land. And he, he, he takes a moment to just reflect on how good God has been and how wonderful he has been and how many victories the Lord has given through his hand and how that the ones whom he has defeated, their gods have perished, but his God remains alive. And so David talks to us in that Psalm 138 to assure us that we need to look back on what God has already done. We keep looking for him to do in the now. But if you thank him for what he's already done, he'll do what you need and more in the land. Hallelujah. So David says in that first verse, he says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. I'm not giving God a half-hearted praise. I'm not going to give him what's left of me, but I've given him all of me. I'm praising him with my whole heart. I'm praising him with my whole body. I'm praising him with everything I got. I'm praising him with my mind. I'm praising him with my soul. I'm praising him with the clapping of my head. I'm praising him with the lifting of my voice. Hallelujah. Oh, it is a, and I'm not praising him in private. He says, but before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. Before the little G gods, I'm going to give God a great big praise. Hallelujah. And you got to learn how to give God praise. Hallelujah. When praise is necessary. 
you got to learn how to give God praise. Hallelujah. When it's inconvenient. You don't have to be loud like me. But God still deserves a praise. I said I was going to teach and not preach. Uh, but verse 2 says, I will worship toward thy holy temple. Uh, my focus is locked in on the Lord. I'm not going to be distracted by stuff that doesn't mean a difference. I'm not going to be distracted by stuff that will take me back from God. He says, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. You may hear a lot of stuff, but stay with the truth. Brother. Stay with the truth, Pastor O.J. Stay with the truth because the truth will make you free. All of the facts will do is bind you, but the truth makes you free. Oh, my God. He says, for thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Praise is good by yourself. But can you imagine when we all get together? Oh, my, my, my. There's a praise that is different when we all praise together. It's not like the football game where you got one on this end and another on that end. But when we all praise the Lord together, come on, let's practice that right now. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When we all praise the Lord together, hallelujah, walls will come down when we praise him together. Bodies will be healed when we praise him together. Minds will be fixed when we praise him together. Hearts will be regulated. When we praise him together. Hallelujah. There is power in praising the name of the Lord. So you got to look back and see how good God has been. Hallelujah. You may be in a pickle right now, but praise him for what he already done. Praise him for who he already is. He'll show up and show out. When you're praising, he'll make your enemies your footstool. When you're praising, headaches will go away. When you're praising, when you're praising, there's power in your praise. And so verse number three says, in the day when I cried, thou answerest me. And when I cried unto the Lord, he answered me. That's looking back and saying, Lord, I remember when you healed my body. I remember when you saved my soul. I remember when you delivered me. I remember when you raised me. I remember when you helped me. Oh, my, you got to look back. Uh, we used to sing the song. We don't sing it no more. I don't know why. Look where the Lord brought us from. Brought me out of darkness into his marvelous life. Look where he brought me from. And some of us need, we don't need another miracle, we just need a good memory. Oh, my, my, my. We don't need another miracle, we just need a good memory. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my, my. Hallelujah. Oh, my, hallelujah. Hallelujah. David remembered how the Lord strengthened me, strengthened him. He says, in the day when I cry, that answers me and strengthens me with strength in my soul. Hallelujah. David said the Lord will strengthen you where it counts. He'll strengthen you where you need him. He'll strengthen you so that you're not swayed by the waves of society. He'll strengthen you so that you don't get caught up in the ship. He'll strengthen you so that you can stand flat-footed and declare the name of the Lord. He'll strengthen you against thinking, thinking. He'll strengthen you. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, let me take a page from Pastor Glenn Sawyer. He says, when I think God, I thank God. Come on, somebody. When I thank God, I thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's just easy to do. When I think about God, I just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. Hallelujah. And you just can't touch that and leave it alone. Sometimes the praise just begins to bubble up in your soul. And the praise just begins to come forth. Hallelujah. You could be riding down the road at 90 miles an hour when a praise is appropriate. A praise has to come out. Oh, yes, his name. And so as I teach this today, we've got to look back. 
And then we've got to look forward in verses 4 and 5 of that Psalm 138. Amen. When we look forward, we realize that one day everybody will praise the Lord like David did. Listen at what he says. In verse number four, all the kings of the earth shall praise thee. Yes. You mean that those who, who don't even acknowledge you will one day declare your name? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can't get stuck in what you see right now. Because God's got a way of getting praise out of the most unlikely source. He says, all the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. You just keep living for you and keep believing that God's going to save the king. Keep believing that the heart of the king is in the Lord's hand. And as the river of water, he turns it whithersoever he will. I want to let you know that God is still in control. The world may be going to hell in a handbasket, but God is still in control. You may have enemies on the left, enemies on the right, but God is still in control. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has the last word. That's the saving grace that we have. God's got the last word. Don't worry about what folks are saying right now, because some folks can't run anything but their mouth. Oh, my, 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 but God has the last word. And so you got to keep looking forward to what God's going to do. Verse number five says, yea, thou shalt sing in the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. God has a plan of redemption. God has a plan to get glory out of his creation. So look forward in God. Don't look back in disgust, but look back at what God has done. Then look forward to what God's going to do. And then he says, look around. Somebody say, look around. Uh Uh-huh. Look around. He saw what he uh, saw, but it didn't damper his trust in God. Yeah, you got to see folks cutting the food. Yeah, you got to see all of the madness that's in this world. But uh, when you look around, don't let that deter you from following God. Verse 6 says, though the Lord be high, yet he hath respect unto the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Don't worry about those bold, those bold and crazy and rambunctious people in this world. Don't worry about them. Notice them. Amen. Protect yourself from them. Don't just walk through this thing blindly. Well, but they, they used to tell me, pray with your eyes open. I don't know why we close our eyes in prayer now. I haven't been able to find that in the Bible. Maybe I just need to do a little more research. But... Especially if you if you pray for a wife or a husband, pray with your eyes open. <laughs> Amen. And don't be eating pork before you pray. You allowed to see anything. <laughs> Amen. We have these dreams. Child, I saw you last night. And you were, uh-uh, don't tell me that. Uh-uh. Because that don't sound like it came from God, and I don't need what didn't come from God. That's because right. you ate too late. <laughs> Amen. That pork that raised your blood pressure. You thinking all kind of crazy stuff. But though the Lord be high, yet he hath respect unto the lowly. But the proud he knows afar off. If you want to get to God, go low. Oh, my, 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 my. If you want to get the Lord's attention, go low and not high. You ain't got to wave your hands. All you got to do is humble yourself. Go low in order to go high. Hallelujah. Do you have the look of humility? Or do you have the look of pride? Does God hate to see you coming? Or does he love to see your face? Hallelujah. Remember Proverbs 16 and 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. But you also got to remember James 4 and 10, where the Bible says, Humble yourself. Somebody say, Humble yourself. He says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Let me leave with you that the quickest way down is up. And the quickest way up is down. Somebody need to go down on your knee. Hallelujah. 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 And David is saying here to look around you. He says in verse 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Hallelujah. It is a vexing world. We're surrounded by trouble. But the Lord is the one that will revive us. Hallelujah. When you get down, the Lord will revive you. When you're feeling low, the Lord will revive you. He says, thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against 
the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Always know that the left hand is mercy, preacher, and the right hand is power. You need the power of the Lord to deliver you from haters, agitators, and instigators. Thou wilt revive me, and the Lord will save me. Somebody say, Lord, save me. Uh, Lord, revive me. Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, bless me. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So, Lord, have mercy. I'm getting happy. I'm trying not to run. But you got to look back at what the Lord has already done. You got to look forward to what the Lord is going to do. You got to look around to what God is going to do in the midst of your trouble. It'd be wonderful if God just got rid of all everybody that was causing me trouble. But he says, I'm going to revive you. Right in the presence. Yeah, Psalm 23 says, he'll prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The enemy needs to know that you're blessed. The enemy needs to know that you got back up. The enemy needs to know that you got some help. The enemy needs to know. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And so, lastly, you got to look up. Hallelujah. For everything. You got to look up when you don't understand what you see. You got to look up when you don't understand what you feel. You got to look up when you don't understand people. When you don't understand places, when you don't understand things, because you've got to look up and understand that God has a plan. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm abandoned, but God has a plan. It may look like I'm forsaken, but God has a plan. And so it says in that verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Oh, my God. The Lord will perfect that. I ain't got to get a toupee. I ain't got to get no sewing, no crochet, no, uh, ain't no coloring, ain't no, I ain't got to get no extra, but the Lord will perfect that, which concerns me. You can work on the outside and it's wonderful. Y'all are beautiful. I don't know what you look like early in the morning, but anyway. <laughs> but the Lord is going to complete what he started in us. Troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Cast down, but not distraught. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O oh Lord, endureth forever. Can I take a pause? This is for free. I ain't going to charge you this morning. It's not because you've been so wonderful, but it's because of the mercy of God. The mercy of God says that I'm going to give you what you need instead of what you deserve. The mercy of God says I'm going to help you instead of wipe you out. The mercy of God says I got you even when you're in your foolish state. The mercy of God says, I know you don't cross every T and dot every I, but I still love you. I still got it in for you. I will still bless you. I will still help you. I will still heal you. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. And David says, Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Sister Flo, I'm not a self-made man, yes. but I'm a creation of God. Yes. I've been designed by him. Yes. I've been meticulously made by him. Yes. Uh, fearfully and wonderfully made, yes. and that my soul knoweth right well. I'm not just something that got thrown together, yes. but I'm a master's creation. Yes. I'm a work of art in the eyes of God. I may not be nothing in your eyes, but I'm a masterful creation. And what happens is the master has a master plan. Don't you worry about where you are right now. Just keep on going in God. Just keep on living. Just keep on giving. Just keep on loving. Just keep on helping. Just keep on worshiping. Just keep on serving. Just keep on, just keep on, just 
Antifa. Somebody give God a praise right there. The Lord finishes what he starts. Just like you, I am a work in progress. And Riley and Chloe and everybody young and haven't really fully grasped what's going on, just know that you're at work in progress. Every time Mama whoop you, it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. That's part of the work. Uh -huh. And it's not punishment when Mama does it or Daddy does it. But we're just trying to be like the Lord. Yeah. Whom the Lord loves, yes. he chases. Yes, he does. Thank you, Lord. And so, Thank you, don't rebel yes. against the chastisement. Yes. Just come out of the whooping sand battle. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I told you, your attitude makes all the difference. Yes. When they take your Xbox and your PS5 or PS20, I don't know which one they're up to now. Amen. When the Lord takes your iPhone 40 and your Android 29 or 30, just say better. Yeah. Prophesy to your own self and say better. Yeah. I love that his mercy endures forever. Can I say to you, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. I told you I'm not immune to what goes on. Two and five pastors want to just throw in the top and say enough is enough. But let the Lord finish what he started in you. And, and let me say, the sooner we surrender, the better off we are. Pastor OJ, we try and manipulate the narrative. We try to say that if I do this, then this will happen. But when God is in control, controls the input and the output, he controls every detail along the way. And what he's really doing, saints, is that he's driving us back to him. When he blocks you, well, maybe y'all not been blocked before, but, but, uh, God is a blocker. Oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. He will shut a door, and you be like, I want what's on the other side of that door. Oh, and God is saying, thank you. Ain't bothered by what you want. My mama tell me all the time, you're not too old for your wants to hurt you. Uh -huh. But his mercy endures forever. Don't give up on yourself. And certainly, certainly, don't give up on the Lord. When he is done with us, we will come out perfect. And sis, when he's done, it's usually when he brings us on to heaven. So until your last breath, Give God your best. Do you have the look? Look back to remember. Look forward in hope. Look around to assess what's going on. And then look up in prayer, praise, and worship. You may not be able to pray like Evangelist Patterson, but pray like God give you the prayer. Oh, yes. He hears the loud prayer just as much as he does the quiet prayer. And if you're anything like Peter, Peter didn't have time for a shut-in and a three-day fast before he said, Lord, save me. He was going down for the count. And all he could say was those three little words. Lord, save me. Yes. And the next verse says, and immediately. Somebody say immediately. immediately. 
It said Jesus stretched forth his hand, yes. caught him by the hand, and lifted him up. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let me change the title of the message to Thank you, Lord. you have the Lord. Yes. You have it. Uh, Don't lose it. Don't lose the look. Some of us sometimes can look like we've been sucking on lemons and limes. Catch us at the wrong time. I, 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 I saw one of my sisters this morning at the stoplight, and she was acting like a saint, praise God, amen. And so I got out of my truck, ran back, and hugged her neck. You never know who's watching you. But try to keep the look of Christ on your face. Well, and in your mouth uh -huh, and in your hands because we can tell some folks some things Woo! it's like Kung Fu Hewitt and we can twist our neck sometimes amen we can fling that hair okay I'm, I'm done amen but you have the look that will get you into the graces of God. Yes. You have the look that will get you heaven's best. Let God finish what he started in you. Let him have his way. Will you rest in the presence of the Lord? If you have a need today, will you simply lift up your hand that the Lord may see you. If you have a concern, if there's something bothering you, if there's something that's a stronghold uh, 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 something that it just gets under your skin or on your last nerve. Just lift your hands to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, God, you see the hands that are lifted in our presence today. Not only that, oh God, but you see the hearts that are lifted up to heaven to you. Lord, we ask that you will look upon us right now. God, as we look on your greatness, as we look on your mercy, as we look on your favor, we say thank you. And God, right now we cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. We give you our everything, oh God. We give you our triumphs and our tragedies. We give you our victories and our defeats. God, we give you everything. We thank you, God, for how you blessed us in the past. We thank you, God, that you will save in the midst of this untoward, untoward world. We thank you, God, that we don't have to get caught up in the shift of morality and values and morals, but, Lord, that we can draw from your word in how we are to be and how we are to act. And, Lord, we ask that you will look upon us, oh, God, with favor today. God, we come humble before you, not with pride and arrogance, oh, God, but with humility, oh, God. Recognize and realize your sovereignty. And we say thank you. Thank you for how good you've been. Thank you for how good you are. And thank you for how good you shall be. Hallelujah. You said you'd never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. And we say thank you. Lord, as we think about the things that are facing us, Oh, God, the things that will happen this week and next week, the bills that are due, the health issues that we have, we give it all to you. We ask for your healing, Lord. We ask for your deliverance, Lord. We ask you to make us whole and complete as only you can. Bless us, oh, God. Keep us, Lord. Strengthen us from the inside out that we may be able to return a proper praise, worship, and adoration unto you. We thank you for this day, oh God. Thank you for the impartation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we shall give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. Will you put a praise on this? Will you seal this prayer with a praise?